today we're gonna do another stream. Uh, I have a few things I wanna uh, enhance on, on the ticket for project that I was working before, uh, which is uh, which is a tool to sell tickets to people. So let's get to it. And as always, we're working with React as a front end library, and we have Node on the on the back end. Uh, in both cases, I'm using TypeScript. Uh, yeah, in the back end, I'm using FedEx.js as well, which is quite quite cool thing. Uh, but first, I'm, I'm just gonna do like a small fix in front end, so just pure React stuff. And, and the second will be a bit harder. Uh, it's gonna be more complex, so it's gonna require back end and front end change. But let's. Uh, yeah, let's get to it. I'm just gonna check some stuff and let's, yeah, let me explain the problem. So, this is Ticketflow. If you've seen the stream before, I'm building this ticketing system so that local artists in the town where I live can sell the tickets to their events. And um, this is the first uh, version of it. It's currently live, so you know, if you go ticket flow, viewer codes, you get to the right place. Uh, but right now, I'm working on uh, so working on some ex uh, some enhancements to this thing. So let me go through uh, the journey. So let's say this is an organizer portal. So this is where the person who wants to create an event comes and sets a price and you know time and stuff. And then, uh, then they get this unique link that they can share, whatever means necessary. And when I do that, uh, the people buying it will hit this site, which is basically just information about the event, the price, and here they have an option to buy it. So let's say we buy this thing, right? So it's using something like Stripe, um, but it's Swedish uh, kind of payment integration solution. It's quite neat. And we get to this thank you page. So what we don't have right now is uh, support for, well, support for like sending the tickets to people, email. That's what I'm going to do next stage. Uh, but we, what we're thinking for the MVP is just to kind of provide list of people who paid and then the organizer can check against the list. But right now, when the person finished buying the product, right, they, they just get thank you for your order. And but we also want to tell them uh, they're not going to receive a ticket, that they're going to be put in a list and then the organizer gets the list, right? So what I'm thinking is I'm going to put some like info block right here on top of this, your order was been placed, Klarna nothing. This this whole thing, so content comes from Klarna, uh, so I can't change that, but I can put something above it. So that's, that's my plan. I'm going to put some text here and uh, yeah, see, see how that goes. So this is code. I don't know, it's, uh, it's maybe the, ah, it's probably fine. I'm thinking maybe it would be nicer to have it, uh, uh, have it dark, but I don't know. Well, now it's just broke. Yeah. No, we want full screen. Cool. Um, all right, so somewhere I have a confirmation page. Well, this looks very much like, uh, oh yeah, this is backend. So that's not what we want right now. We want frontend code, which is this one. So right now, when we check source, we have components, and we have public, and here is a confirmation page. Uh, so this is how it looks right now. The page layout provides like, the header and the footer, and then, yeah, that, that thing I wanted to solve in the future as well. So right now when we have loading, so whenever somebody comes to this confirmation page, we go to backend, of course, to 
fetch data about the order and f try to make sure that we actually get the order and then it's paid and in that case we're going to show the confirmation but while we're doing this communication we oh by the way i, I don't uh, we we just show some text uh, not some fancy spinner, which I should probably do instead. Uh, but that's, you know, <laughs> it's a task for future. Future me is going to solve this. And uh, so right now we're just kind of setting up whatever comes from, from the backend. But let me, actually I forgot one more thing. What if we go to non-existing order? What's going to happen then? And I think we just get something wrong. Yeah, order not found. Well, this is not optimal, uh, but it's okay, I guess, for now. Yeah. Wonder what would happen. Yeah, that's okay. And yeah, so let's let's build on top of that. So what we want to do is this is a simple code, right? So we have a page layout which is like wrapper content. Which using which is using the child uh, is it called child rendering, uh, right? When when the content of this tag is actually rendered inside the page layout com the, uh, component, and uh, right, and here we have the fallback kinda that I should solve, and here we have the main part that gets there every time. So what we are doing right now is that we're gonna make more stuff here. Right. So I'm wrapping this to uh, how's it called? Fractal? I don't know. This is the React thingy. Is that gonna help me format it? <coughs> An idea here is that so with that we can put some I don't know. Let's start with P, like a uh, paragraph here saying hi. Let's clean this up a bit. So the idea here is that if it finished loading, we're going to see two things, this high thing and this thing. So let's see what we see. OK, we see high here and we see this thing. So that's pretty good. In IO case, this should be in the center. So let's do that. Th so let's. Uh, I think there is an issue when when I try to do it. I'm now looking at a different file, different page, even page, uh, to see how I deal usually with this kind of stuff. What I do is this. I guess. Okay, mm. so I'm gonna steal this, take it here and clean it up a bit. So instead of, ah. so I think I remember, if I remember correctly, that there was an issue, oh, we don't need style. There was an issue when I tried to put a container uh, class on the, on the whole thing when there was the uh, E-frame, or it's not E-frame I guess. Uh, yeah, it's probably from from Klarna. So let's uh, let's try this. The container class name, by the way, this thing is coming from the Bootstrap library, which gives you several neat, uh, you know, CSS pre-programmed stuff that looks nice. So you don't need to worry too much about them. If we check here, well, it's uh, it's actually okay, right? So this is the container. This thing is right here, so that's fine. And oop, sorry. And let's see. So now I'm no CSS guru person, but this looks horrible, right? We probably want this text in the middle. That shouldn't be a problem. Maybe we can do something like text align center. Is that that easy? Yeah, so let's do that. And because I'm trying to keep it cleanish, 
Um, I'm trying not to do too much styling here. So I'm going to use a class name again. And uh, yeah, there's something like text center. I know. I, I need to check the docs, I guess. So let's check the docs. Uh, but it yeah, actually look like I nailed it. Text center. All right, so that's another bootstrap uh, class name, I guess, primitive, whatever you want to call it. So how Bootstrap works is you get a bunch of free class names or like classes, CSS classes, and you can compose them together. So what you saw is that on the container, I, uh, on the div that contains those two things, I said container. Uh, so if we check which one was it, it's this guy, right? Uh, here it says container. If you like what container is doing, it's actually putting some width, some padding, and uh, yeah, so it kind of makes it nicer to look at. So it doesn't start from the absolute edge of your monitor, it's somewhere in the middle. But then I said, oh, my thing, I need it to be in the middle, kind of. And then I guessed that it's text center uh, class, but you could also look it up on the bootstrap. And when I look into text center, how is that defined? It says text align center important. Important is obviously very bad, I hear. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what Bootstrap does. So good enough for me. Uh, however, let's, let's put more text in it. Let's first figure out maybe what text we should put there. Let's close this, write some better text. So we're saying hi here. As you can see, I'm using this text uh, object where I'm all the text, like strings that are exposed to users. I'm trying to put to one file, one object. Um, and in the future that would, well, first of all, that just makes sure that text is in one place. And if I need to change text, I just go there and, and do what I need to do. But uh, also, it lets me actually go there and uh, change the language, right? So I can have multiple files, different, different languages uh, with the same keywords here, general loading. And I can just switch, switch the, the text because I'm using this context here right now it just always returns the same thing but uh, but they can make it more complex in the future right there can be the flags that you usually see on the web pages to switch languages and this could return Swedish version of text or Czech language or whatever that's why so right now I'm gonna move this text to here so let's see how this file looks like uh, so this file is yeah, what you can imagine, just a JavaScript object with a bunch of keys and then the t text values. I don't know if I have confirmation. No. So let's, let's, uh, let's be, let's build one. So, so let's say confirmation the naming here is just what I chose. So what I chose to do is do like uh, using what's the case? Kebab case when you underscore split words with underscores. So confirmation page, and then uh, so this is like a topic or area or component if it's big enough. And then I put two uh, underscores and put the specific text. So in this case, it's. Uh, Oh, you are on the list text. Naming is uh, important, of course. But uh, yeah, so so now we need to create some text. So let's do something positive. Such a great news.
We added you to our list of attendees. That the uh, event organizer will use. And instead of edit you, we can be more explicit. So we can say we edit your email and name to our list of attendees that the event organizer can will use or will have available. Who's still available? Let's Google that. Uh -oh. Available, yeah, I think pretty close. It should work. <laughs> there will be one more person checking after me, so it's all good. If I make too much mistakes, then I will change it later. <laughs> all right, but then uh, I have this text, and now see what we are talking about. So now I can use it. I can say text. And uh, confirmation page, you're on the list. And if we save it, we're really lucky, we can see the text here. So this is perfect. Uh, this is not very eye catchy, I guess. We can read it, but I guess normally I would just scan through it and not notice it. So we want to make it more in the face kind of thing. So I'm going to check in the uh, bootstrap library if they have some fancy thing. So as I mentioned, the bootstrap thing is the CSS library that I'm using. And I'm looking for some sort of, you know, like a, like a, like a blob of text, some info blob or something that's going to help me out. Actually, now I'm thinking, I actually have saved somewhere. How did I do it? Bootstrap themes. Yeah, that's quite a neat page. Boot watch. And you can see different themes, but what I'm using this for usually is just to kind of see uh, what Bootstrap can do. So you can see different buttons and stuff, and now I'm looking for what would be nice. Right, some something like this. This is what I was talking about. So we can do blue one or green one, I guess. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, that was might be too quick, but you can just click on this code button right here, and it's on anything, right? So this code blocks this badges thing. You can also click here, and you get to see you, you get to see the source code, and then you just you know take it. So, yeah, I don't need the button, so it's just, yeah, so it's just basically alert, an alert primary. Dismissible means that you can cancel it, I guess, which we don't want, so let's do alert and alert primary. I'm gonna take those classes, go back to my source code. This is my front end, right? Um, so right now I have these ar uh, par paragraph here with the text in it. I wonder if I can just put it on the paragraph, how that that's gonna look like. Let's try that. So React doesn't allow you to use class as a tag because this is not HTML, right? This is uh, this something uh, which which React compo compiles to HTML at some point. But the, so what I'm saying is that this is actually like JavaScript, kinda, or, or it's represented as JavaScript. And the class is a reserve reserve name in JavaScript, so you can't use class here. That's why they have class name, 
or at least that's what I know, that's what I've heard. All right, it says here JSX, it's the thing we're writing here. And then, uh, yeah, we have this class name, and you can combine them with just spaces, right? If I'm going too slow, just, you know, shout at me or throw something at me, or you can't throw stuff, but you could, yeah, scream, I guess, with the chat. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's suspend and the suspend, I guess. Oh, yeah, so we have this thing. This is already quite good, I think. It's a bit small, so I'm going to increase the font size here, I think. And also, though, it's kind of wide, right? It takes a lot of space. Maybe it would be nicer to have it thinner. And maybe I can put like exclamation mark or something. Uh, but before we do that, let's let's see how it looks if we do uh, if we do the success well success version. So I'm gonna just copy this one and do instead of alert primary we can do success right if I spell that correctly. I never know two C's one C let's try one C. It's probably wrong. Yeah, didn't feel right. Yes. So this looks, I don't know. Guess I'm leaning towards the green one because the blue one isn't really matching uh, rest of the things, right? This blue is different blue. By the way, this, this whole color scheme and everything that comes from Bootstrap, I didn't do anything for it. So uh, you just say kind of primary color and that's blue in everywhere. So when we were somewhere else, right, all the buttons, right, all the buttons, uh, they have a primary color. And you don't say blue and the code of the color, you just say primary. And then uh, as we were looking at these uh, bootwatch themes for Bootstrap, you kind of just switch the minified C CSS file and you get a different theme. So even though you called it primary, it's blue by default, but it can be pink or whatever, salmon color here, or can be, yeah, I guess you get the point. So that's really neat. If you wanna, if you wanna uh, kind of customize in the future, which this might be actually the case because what we're building is a portal for people to sell tickets for their events, and I can imagine that you know hip hop event wants to have a different theme than uh, you know the dark metal or death metal or something, right? So right now we don't do customizations, but in the future we might. Uh, by the way, so that's also a thing I'm considering. If you open the page here, you get this default background. But one thing I want to build as well in the future is for the organizer to actually choose a background from either some preselected thing or can upload their own picture that's going to show here. Yeah. All right, so I think we're going to go with green one. And uh, yeah, let's just make the text bigger. How do we do that? It's a good question. So text size. So this is a bootstrap recommendation, right? And here you can read stuff. And if you haven't seen my stream before, that's what I'm doing. Just kind of browsing recommendation for half an hour and steal one sentence and yeah. Um, I think it's, what did I say, size, right? Sizing. Yeah. With, no, or. All right, it's, it's like on the block components, but we want text. They should look at this. So text alignment, you already guessed this one. And then text wrapping, no, thank you. Word break, no. Transform, no. Font weight. This could be interesting. 
Oh, we can make it bolt. That's useful, I guess. Yeah. Let's make it bolt. So going here. No, sorry. Going to front end. We can make it text bolt. Fun white bolt. I also deleted the, the other one. So I'm just gonna stick with one now. And it looks now bolder. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And how do I do a text? Hmm, needs to be some sizing, I guess. That's what we did before. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess it's a font size, isn't it? Let's Google. Yeah, it's font size. Doesn't Bootstrap has a font size thing? Let's see. Okay, this seems to be getting somewhere. No, that's just about the age and stuff. We can do small, okay. Oh, so they're using this instead, like the HTML elements. That might be okay, I guess. Okay, yeah, lead. Lead is a thing, I guess. Do we have something else? Now let's try lead. What does lead do? But I guess that sounds like it might be too big for our case. Let's see what it does. Ooh, this is good. Yeah. Maybe take away the bolt, right? Yeah, this is good. I think I'm happy with this. Any obstructions? Suggestions? No? Alright, I'm gonna uh, keep that. That seems fine. So that was the first thing I wanted to do today. So let's uh, let's commit this. Oh, yeah, do it. Sorry some good stuff. So I want to separate the next task in the code as well. Mm. So that's why I'm committing it right now. Using GitLab for this. And I've built pipelines to do some basic tests, but not the real tests. <laughs> and uh, let's see that. Let's review the files I changed. Oh wait, where do I see changes? Here. So we added the text, confirmation page, whatever, and then we refactor this and add it, uh, yeah, added our text on top. So this is really neat. And so it's running some pipeline, making sure that everything can compile and create, sorry, create an artifact that I can later use for deployments. Uh, just gonna mark it here so it's gonna merge automatically when the pipeline finishes. And in the meantime we can look on the other thing because that's independent. 